Hello and what's up guys in the previous video I have talked about the Rust2 bag and today I'm going to open up on a new chapter as I promised and I will teach you about the development inside Rust2. Now if you remember when you first installed Rust2 and you can watch my previous videos if you want to remind yourself about it you have actually installed uh, an ecosystem of course with many abilities but also you have installed with it uh, a list of packages and this is how to list them. Now, as you can see these packages and I have told you about this before are written in either C++ or Python languages because these languages are officially adopted by Rust and Rust2. Now, so people before you has, uh, have already have already built uh, such packages, have written their source codes uh, and built them correctly. Now what I want you to uh, like grasp from these uh, next uh, set of videos is how to build such packages yourself because sometimes it's very essential, most of the time it's very essential to build your own custom made packages for many tasks inside your Rust projects because most of the time these packages are not enough. So uh, I uh, advise you to watch this set of videos and of course do not forget to subscribe to my channel and to hit the notification button to stay updated. So let's start. Okay, so before like going into the coding and how to write the code uh, of uh, the packages, uh, I want you to uh, learn about the architecture that is followed uh, inside Rust2. Uh, and this is very essential because if you want to share your work, let's say with other Rust2 users, they need to understand your work. So you need to uh, use their common language uh, in order to build such packages. And also, uh, if you like write uh, your code, your source code for these packages, you need to follow this architecture so you can build them using the available build tools. And I will talk about that uh, later. And so otherwise it will give you an error. So it's very essential to learn about this architecture. And this uh, session is dedicated uh, to that. So I have a prepared like a little nice presentation. So let me open the slideshow mode. Okay, so you already know about your Rust2 uh, ecosystem or environment that you just downloaded. And this is actually what we call a workspace. And more specifically, this is the underlay workspace uh, because it's like the base structure on which everything is built. Now, what are we? What we are going to do uh, in order to create our custom-made packages is that we want to create our own workspace on top of the underlay, and this is what we call an overlay, because we don't want our packages, our custom-made packages, to interfere with any of the built-in packages that were installed with the Rust2 ecosystem. Now, inside this overlay or workspace, let's say, you will need to create a source directory called SRC. I mean, sometimes uh, in all of this, you need to follow the names of the directories uh, that I'm mentioning, uh, but uh, some, sometimes it is, it's essential, but sometimes it is not. So my advice to you is to follow the uh, convention all the time to avoid any errors or any mistakes. But do not worry about it. I will show you later on that all of this structure can be built uh, by the system, by your computer, by Rust2 using a single command. So, but I want you to understand this architecture. So in case any mistake happened or something, you will need to uh, have a, an idea or a proper understanding of what's going on to tackle it. So inside this source directory, you will create like several uh, directories 
each directory for a specific package. And inside this directory, I will show you what kind of files we will put. So inside each package, you will actually need to put all of these files. Now, uh, you can you can follow the C++ building style using using the C++ language, or you can follow the Python style, uh, Python 3, of course. Uh, but for these set of tutorials, I will follow the C++ language because one, uh, later on when I will talk about the gazebo simulator, you will need to uh, use the C++ language. You cannot use Python there. Uh, and sometimes I use it in combination with Rust. So I advise you to learn C++. And actually, uh, according to my own preferences, I use C++ for Rust and uh, uh, such a kind of like work uh, because when you are at a certain level uh, of knowing many uh, programming languages, you need to uh, like allocate each language for a specific task. For me, I use C++ for the Rust work uh, and I use, let's say, Python for data science and machine learning, AI and stuff like that. So I keep my mind refreshed about them all because if you don't practice any programming language, you will easily uh, forget about it. Uh, so uh, as you can see for the C++ style, you will have the cmakelist.txt. And this is a file uh, where you include all the specifications for your system uh, about the building process, like what libraries are you using to build this package, like what C++ standards are you using, etc. I will go over them, over this file and its content, and I will, wrote, I will write a code with you later on in C++ to populate this kind of files. So don't worry about it for now. Next, you will have the package.xml file, which is an XML file, obviously, in which you will uh, specify some metadata about your package, like uh, who is the author, like uh, uh, what is the name of this package, etc. Next, you will have the source, and this is different from the other source directory that I have showed you, uh, that uh, I have shown you earlier, and uh, in this directory, you will put all the source files that are needed uh, to define the task of your package. And these here are files, uh, are C++ files with the extension .cpp mainly. And in the include directory, finally, you will have uh, all the header files, which are C++ files that are used uh, by many other files. So you can consider them as dependencies. So we call them header files. And of course, these are custom made header files put inside the include directory. If you use like any other built in header files, you don't need to include them inside this directory. You can use them directly in your source directory right here. Now, uh, if you build your package, let's say, uh, and you put all the source code and everything. Now you need to build them, right? So I want you to get familiarized with the nomenclature inside Rust2 but because it's very essential to understand what is going on in here. Uh, so we have in Rust2 what we call a build tool. And actually we have it in Rust also, Rust1. And the build tool is responsible for organizing the building process. Like uh, it is responsible for calling uh, the, uh, let's say, uh, adequate libraries that you need to build your package uh, and all kind of stuff like this. So it's like the organizer. And you have another thing that we call the build system. And the build system is actually the guy who does all this uh, work. So uh, the, the build tool is the organizer, but the build system is the guy who does the work. So uh, it is responsible for building your package, uh, building an executable file out of your source code and putting all the libraries uh, and actually linking these libraries with this, uh, let's say, uh, source code for your package that is responsible for a certain task inside one executable file that you can use it later on uh, and run it using Rust2 run and you put the name of the package and the executable as we did early in earlier videos 
in with built-in packages, but now for custom-made packages. So inside Rust 2, uh, the build system is called Amend, and there are two versions of it, one for the C++ uh, and the other one for the Python language. So if you are following the C++ building style, which with what I am doing right here in my tutorials, you will need to use the Amend CMake build uh, system along with the C++ language, obviously. Uh, and Kalkin will be the tool that is responsible uh, for calling the system and building our packages. Now, if, we, if I go back to the previous uh, tree, you can see that uh, after building all, after like sourcing all your packages and writing their code, uh, you, can, you need to go back to your workspace, the Rust2 overlay directory, let's say, and here you will need to call Kalkin in order to build these packages. And of course, there are many options that can be done right here. Like you can build a specific package, all of the packages, ignore some packages. I will go over them later on in details. So here comes the Kalkin. And once Kalkin builds your packages, it will automatically create three directories uh, on the level of the source directory right here that you have just created yourself. And these are the build directory that includes all the binary files or the intermediate files necessary for the final, uh, let's say, uh, executable files of your packages. And this will include, for example, the .cmake uh, type of files, which are configuration files followed by the C, uh, by the amend cmake uh, build system, let's say. Uh, and also you will have the install directory in which all the executable uh, the executable files of your packages will be included uh, and this will be called by rust to run once you put it inside your terminal and here you will have the log directory in which there are all the commands uh, during the building process if you want to have a look of what went uh, when uh, Colcon was building your packages uh, and actually the data inside these uh, directories will be classified or categorized in set of directories, each one corresponding to a certain package of one of the packages that you have just uh, created. So that's it for this video. I hope you find it uh, useful, guys. And uh, as I said before, it's very essential to know about this architecture and don't worry about it later on, as I told you, uh, Rust2 has specific commands to build all this architecture for you and later on I will go over a quick example in which I will show you briefly how to do all these kind of stuffs and how to create your own package and executable and how to run them. So stay tuned and for now I bid you farewell and I hope to, get, to see you guys later on.